This video is taken from a graduate level course prepared and presented by the Royal Architectural Institute of Canada as a part of the RIIC's syllabus program, the National Alternative Path to Architectural Licensure in Canada. It was created to support learning for students of architecture and foreign licensed architects interested in learning about architectural practice in Canada. The course may be taken as either a credit course with an official RIIC syllabus transcript provided at completion or in modules offered as architectural continuing education. For more information about the RIIC's continuing education courses, please go to RAIC.org slash continuing education. For more information about the RAIC syllabus program, please go to RAIC-syllabus.ca slash home. This is the first presentation of Lesson Unit 1, Introduction. The learning outcomes for this presentation are to explain the basic concepts of construction contract administration and field review, differentiate the office functions and field functions, and identify the purpose of contract administration. This presentation will introduce the basic purposes of construction contract administration and field review. It will provide students with an overview of the architect's and consultant's roles, contracts, and purposes. What is construction contract administration? These services require a qualified architect or contract administrator with extensive interpersonal skills and deep knowledge of construction. Many architects specialize in this field. Clients do not always value the professional services provided for contract administration and sometimes try to reduce or eliminate the role of the architect during this phase. However, many jurisdictions require a signed commitment from a licensed professional indicating their involvement in the construction project. Construction contract administration is conducted by the architect on behalf of both the client and the constructor. Therefore, as will be discussed in Lesson 2, it needs to be reinforced that the architect must fill the role of impartial interpreter of the construction documents. Construction contract administration includes both office functions and field functions. These are not two different roles, but reflect different activities and responsibilities of the same role. The purpose of construction contract administration is to provide expert review of the work of the constructor manage quality and validate scope through identifying non-conformance of the construction work when compared to the construction documents. It involves analysis of data gathered from construction site observations and documents review and making decisions about whether interventions are needed to either insist that non-conforming work be rectified or change the design through the change process. What are the purposes of Construction Contract Administration Office Functions? Construction Contract Administration describes the services provided by the architect to fulfill the role in standard construction contracts, such as those duties outlined in General Conditions GC 2.2 of CCDC 2, Role of the Consultant. The construction contract also describes their respective roles and obligations of the contractor and the owner. In addition, Contract administration provides an opportunity for the architect to assist in realizing the project by providing the contractor with technical interpretations and information. What are construction contract administration field functions? The field functions of construction contract administration are done concurrently and in coordination with a variety of office tasks. The terms used to describe the functions performed by an architect during the construction phase of the project on the site or out of the office are field review, general review, site review, and site observations. What are the purposes of field review? The architect's field review work has the following three purposes. To monitor the contractor's performance in maintaining both the construction schedule and the standards or quality of construction. 
to provide guidance to the contractor by interpreting the contract documents and issuing necessary supplemental instructions, and to fulfill performance standards of general review as required by the Client or Architect Agreement, authorities having jurisdiction, and provincial or territorial associations of architects. An Architect's Guide to Construction by Brian Palmquist states there are three tool sets to manage design and construction. I work, plan, I action, and I know how. I work plan, a traditional work plan, also called a work breakdown structure, is simply a list of all of the key processes and procedures involved in design and construction. I action, the second tool set, describes the integrated set of transient communications that capture I work plan, work products, and deals with emergent issues. I know how, the third and final tool set, encompasses the experience, expertise, and knowledge database that each designer and builder need to assemble in order to evolve to become efficient and more competitive. There are four principles that demystify the complex management system. One, record the journey. Two, resolve the issue. Three, review the results. And four, remember and learn to improve. In summary, in this presentation, we introduced the basic concepts of this course and described the purposes of office and field functions. We also introduced three tool sets and four principles to manage construction activities. Thank you for watching.